morning or uh, afternoon, you know the drill. Uh, first, I want to apologize. I completely spaced making the video for this uh, until I got an email from a student saying that the assignment didn't make any sense and there wasn't a video. So I apologize for that. Um, and uh, we, I will do better. I won't do that again. Again, sorry. Sorry about that. Okay, moving on. Um, today is kind of the last of our super heavy Photoshop days. Um, I, again, I was trying to front load these so that uh, as, you know, every, you know, smart person is saying that this is a winter virus and um, it, excuse me, it will only get worse as we enter the colder months of the year. Um, with that coming this weekend, I thought it would be prudent to um, try and get these in as um, while our cases are still relatively low so that should you need to come in after school or, or on a Friday, um, that you could be able to do that with sort of fewer worries about our case numbers. Okay, um, so today we're talking about um, something that is called a layer mask, <clears throat> okay? And um, to this point, we've used our brush tool uh, in a couple different ways, and we've used our selection tools in a couple different ways. Um, now we're gonna kind of put those together uh, in what is called a layer mask. Okay, so I'm gonna open up these two images here. I've just got a picture of a cloud and a picture of a moon here. And give you a little demo, uh, a couple demos on what, excuse me, on how um, a layer mask works. Okay, so I've got, uh, I've got the moon here and I've got a lovely cloud here. It's very nice, it's very fluffy. Um, Super contrasty too. I actually really like this picture for some reason. Okay, so um, a layer mask allows us to selectively hide or show a part of a layer. Okay, so now I've got this moon uh, on top of the cloud layer here, over here, layers, right? Okay, and to add a layer mask to this, I'm going to just simply click this little white dot or black dot on a white rectangle button here, okay? It kind of looks like the Japanese flag, so that's always a nice mnemonic device to help you remember is you can click the Japanese flag. Um, I just want to preface all of this um, by saying that now is when we start getting into um, it being very important to, uh, that you pay attention to what layer and if you have layer masks up, you have to pay attention very closely what you're working on, what surface you're working on, okay? So again, <clears throat> I'm gonna click layer one here, and I'm gonna add a layer mask. Now, what it looks like is it just adds this blank white square um, adjacent to the layer thumbnail here. So in this case, it's the moon, right? And then we've got this white, thing here. So this, imagine that this is sitting on top like this. Okay? This is just the graphical representation there. Okay? So when a layer mask is white like this, we're able to see what is on this layer. This layer is what we would say this layer is visible. Right? So right now I can see the moon here. Let me do that so it's a little more easy to see. But what happens if I paint this to black. This will hide, okay? There's a keyboard shortcut to invert this. I'm just gonna hit Command I to invert it. Okay, so I changed it from white to black, and by changing it from white to black, I'm now masking this. Now the word masking, uh, let's, let's explore that for a second, right? When we're talking about a masking layer, think about masking tape, right? If you've ever painted a room, Right, you put up painter's tape around all the corners so that you don't get paint everywhere. And when you paint, the paint does not touch what's behind the tape. If you use masking tape for like an art project, right, you paint over it and then you peel it off and then what's left underneath is a nice crisp line. Think of this as like a window. And when we paint it black, we're covering it with masking tape, meaning that we can't see through that window anymore. But we can selectively peel away the parts that we want to using our brush and helped by selection tools. 
let me show you how to do this. Okay, so I'm going to invert this again to change it white. Then I'm going to turn uh, I'm going to turn this back on. Okay, so again, like I said earlier, it's very important. Uh, if you're looking at my mouse here, it's very important to remember where you are and where you're painting. Because, for example, if I paint this black, the m because I'm now here, the moon will turn black. But if I paint this black, the moon will just go away and I'll see what's below. Sorry about the text notifications there. That's my son at Spartan Day Kid, Spartan Station. Okay, so I'm going to use uh, a brush now. So I'm going to select, I'm going to hit B on my uh, keyboard. And over here on the color picker, we have this button, which will t change us from wherever we are to a default white over black. And then if we click this button, it will switch between those. Now there is a nice keyboard shortcut for this, which is D, which will take us to default black over white and then X, which will alternate between them, okay? So the rule of thumb is that you need to use a, you need to use the opposite of whatever your layer mask is. So in this case, it's white. So it, what's the opposite of white here? Black, so I'm in the wrong foreground. So I need to switch that to go to black. And now, <coughs> sorry, let me zoom this down a whole bunch. Okay, and make it super hard. Okay, so now painting with a painting in black on a white layer mask, I'm able to conceal the moon. Or excuse me, the black. Okay? And it's okay that I'm taking chunks out of the moon there, because our goal here is just to get rid of the black. Okay? And here is why layer masks are good and great, okay? They work under what is called non-destructive editing, which you'll remember back in August, we discussed that that's the goal, okay? We don't wanna make any uh, edits that we can't um, fix later, okay? So, now think about our layer masks. So if I have now this part, I went too far with the black, so what can I do? Can change my color by clicking this button or clicking X and now if I paint white on the layer mask I can bring that part back okay now <clears throat> where do selection tools come into all this well you see how my moon has a black ring around it it's not exactly ideal so what we need to do is let's pretend we did this the right way from the get-go. So I'm going to delete that layer mask, add a new one. Okay, so layers, excuse me, uh, selections themselves are transferable between layers and layer masks, meaning that I can select something from one layer and then go to another layer to apply that selection or we can go from one uh, layer to a layer mask and it does the same thing. So what I'm gonna do is use my quick select tool to select the black of the moon there, uh, of the galaxy or you know whatever, space. And with this selected, now I'm going to click over to my layer mask and I'm going to paint in black. So I'm going to bring up my brush by hitting B. I'm going to switch it from white over black to now black over white. And I'm able to very precisely, thanks to my selection tool, get rid of this. Or rather hide it. We're not getting rid of it. Okay. I'm free now to reposition the moon wherever I want to, which is really neat. And for uh, for bonus points, let's uh, let's do this in uh, in photo two. We we made a Death Star brush yesterday, which actually it doesn't look like it's saved. Too bad. That's okay. Never mind. We're gonna put a Death Star there, but it didn't save. What a shame. Okay, so let's do this one more time. I'll uh, I'll, I'll do the examples of the images that I uh, attached in. Um, 
uh, the Canva in the assignment page. <coughs> okay, so first things first, I'm going to use my object select tool to grab Godzilla here, and I hit Q. Remember to uh, quick to enter quick mass to see where I'm at. Looking pretty good. Maybe uh, maybe add a couple couple of the spikes. Some of his face, I guess. Just kind of make this a little cleaner here. Oops. Let's take that one back. That's a little too much. There we go. Oop, can't forget his tail. Be so sad without his tail. There we go. And let's try and subtract away that white there. A little rough. Nah, that's as good as we'll get. That's okay. All right. So then I'm going to uh, duplicate this selection, Command J. And I'm going to grab this layer and put it onto my, uh, my other layer here, which is an image of downtown Edinburgh, Scotland. And so what we're going to do is drag this up to that layer, the thumb or the tab. We're going to hover it over the tab till that becomes active. And then we're going to drop it on the canvas. Now it's very common that uh, people will try and just drop it on the tab once it's there. And that doesn't work. Okay, You need to... Let me show you how that doesn't work, right? I just if I just drop it here or there, uh, doesn't doesn't really work if you drop it on the tab. You have to bring it down to the canvas section there. Okay, I'm gonna hit V to bring up my move tool, and then I'm gonna click. Make sure I've show transform controls selected so that I can move him around, and I'm gonna scale him because I want to make him rather large. About like let's see here. Are we zoomed out all the way? Yeah, we are. Okay, cool. So, you know, that's pretty good. It's not exactly, like, you know, accurate. Although, if this was Scotland, I guess we should probably be doing the Loch Ness Monster and not Godzilla here. But this was a good high-res image of a monster that I found. So, anyway. Okay. So, um, now we're going to make a selection of the city. Our goal here is to put him behind the buildings uh, to make him look like he's walking on... Uh, in Scotland what's called the Royal Mile there and uh, we'll make him look like he's walking there okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna give Godzilla a layer mask by selecting this layer and then adding a layer mask there sweet now I can't just go selecting now because it won't grab anything so I need to turn off Godzilla and then I actually need to click on my background layer there which actually we should be working on a copy so uh, I'm going to Command-J that, and now I'm working on this layer. Okay, I'm going to go back up to my selection tools, and I'm going to go to Quick Select. And then I'm going to just select the cityscape here, right? And I can hit Q to visualize. Okay, and we want to get the top of this right here, the Q. And actually, there is a reason that I am not selecting. This is called St. Giles Cathedral. And there's a reason I'm not selecting that. And that reason is because, and no one will care about this, except me, and maybe my friend Sarah. Um, there's a reason that we don't select St. Giles up there, and that is because, uh, where am I? Nope, there we go. Uh, that is because uh, if we look at St. Giles here, Godzilla would be walking down this, what's called the High Street, also known as the Royal Mile here. And if Godzilla is walking down the High Street here, he would be in front of St. Giles Cathedral. Look at all these people, my goodness. It's just, it's crazy to see like movies and images and stuff of people living that like pre-corona life man uh it's just strange you know anyway but this was august 2018 so life was quote unquote normal at that time right okay anyway yeah so we're not going to select this because that cathedral is on that side of the road and godzilla would be walking down the street anyway so we hit q sorry to digress that hard on that give my my bad my bad so we'll hit Q, and when we, we're looking like this, that's great. So let me just, after that long Google map break, let's do this again. Okay, so we select background copy here. Then we select our 
quick select but or quick select tool and we're just going to I got the hiccups sorry we're going to select all of that excluding St. Giles there and now we're feeling pretty good okay and I zoomed in way too far so we hit Q looking good Okay, then again, we're going to go back to our layer mask like this, and you can see that the selection, the, the marching ants there, um, oops, the marching ants there are looking good. Okay, they're over Godzilla. Actually, they're not over Godzilla, they're over Godzilla's layer mask. So, again, white layer, we're going to use a black brush, and we just simply paint away his legs. To make him look like he's standing behind those buildings now obviously this is fake it's meant to be kind of a joke but you know we can we can improve this by adding some clouds to give it kind of a more oop that's way 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 too much let's try that again just kind of do this nonsense there you know and we'll make him look like he's a little more onerous we'll change the color of uh, some clouds here uh, let's do some darker grays and stuff. Okay, we just kind of want to make him look like he's looming over the city in a really weird dreamscape, you know. And it looks, I mean, it doesn't look great, but it's not really, not really supposed to. Um, this is the basics of what we would call composite imaging, where we take two different images and we blend them together. Okay, I'm going to do one more here. And uh, hopefully you should uh, have a good idea as to what we're doing um, by now, I'm going to go to Unsplash, and the other one that people will do very frequently is replace a sky, or replace the horizon. So let's see if we can find some pretty, pretty nice horizons here. Mm, sure, we'll do this one. Okay, so I'm going to drag this down to Photoshop. Okay. And I need to replace that horizon with something else. Let's say, let's just search for sunset. Oh, very nice. Okay. So we always want to try and match our scale. So our sunset in this case is kind of off in the distance. This was probably a, a wider lens. And so we need kind of an off in the distance type sky to paint on there, which I think is going to be... Probably, let's go with this one. Okay. We'll wait for that to load. There we go. And I will bring this over into Photoshop as well. Okay. Right. So, what are we going to do? We're going to... Um, I'm going to teach you one last little trick here. Um, so, I'm going to turn off this one. And I'm going to grab the sky here using my quick select tool. And I'm going to hit Q, and we want that because that's what we're replacing. Okay. And now, um, once you've made your selection, you can apply it in a layer mask. So I have a selection here. I'm on layer one now. With a selection, if I add a layer mask just by clicking the button, if the selection is active, it will fill that in with black. Ready? Here we go. So I click that, and it filled out the area that I didn't want with black. And then all of a sudden here at, I think, Lake Louise in Alberta, maybe, uh, we now have this, re we've replaced the sky here, okay? Now, if I want to move that background image um, and not have the layer mask sort of come with me, I need to unlink these layers. So I'm going to click this so that I can now, and then I'm gonna select my layer mask there. I'm going to rearrange this until I kind of have it, pardon the, the late bell there, or the, oh, the dismissal bell there for, uh, for flex. You know, then we can do it like this. And actually, I think it was more realistic when it was kind of just this blue infinite horizon there. Okay, so um, again, um, if you need to come in, uh, today is Friday. Um, obviously, we might be a little late on that one. Uh, I'm going to be a little more lenient on this 
one as far as submissions and stuff go. Um, again, I was just, I'm trying to front load these Photoshop assignments that we've got to, got to know how to do. Um, just in case, you know, our cases, I mean, yesterday we had 2,800 cases in the state. So we're trending, definitely trending in the wrong direction, but um, Murray, so far, you guys have been doing okay. We've been hanging on, so. Okay, uh, have a terrific weekend. Um, all those good things, be good, wear your masks, do good things, be nice to your parents uh, and or legal guardians, and uh, I will see you guys later. Have a great one.